Carolyn Doobie here. Oh, what's the play for today? Well, today I'm playing in the Jumbo Ledger. Yo, this big 150 year old ledger is my art journal today. Now in this journal, I've decided that every page is going to be about a different feeling. And I don't know what feeling I'm gonna do today. So it's gonna reveal itself while I'm playing. Now, by the way, I don't have an idea for what to name this. This thing needs a name besides just the giant ledger. So if you've got a suggestion for me for what I can call this thing, I would so appreciate it if you let me know in the comments. Well, anyway, I'm gonna dive in and start playing with some translucent paints on this. That way I can see the background and just see what feeling comes up. Well, I'm gonna be using Pam Carricker's sheer colors here because, well, they're sheer, and that means I'm gonna be able to see more of the background. Now, you might notice in that palette, I've got three things of yellow. That's because I'm gonna be mixing up some colors. I'm gonna take some of the turquoise, and I'm gonna mix it with yellow, and I'm gonna get the lime green that I love. And after all, we know that yellow and blue makes green, so that's all I'm doing here is a little elementary school color mixing. Now I do have one slight thing that I have to deal with, and that is the fact that this journal is so big, I can't actually keep the paint palette on screen and not have it on top of the journal. And I love that all that color I'm putting on there, I can still see everything that's underneath it. Now you might be wondering how I'm choosing exactly where I'm placing those colors. Is it a complex mathematical formula? <laughs> no, this is called impulse. I am just putting it wherever I feel like it. Now that is the first clue that the muse has dropped on me as to what word belongs on this page. Now this journal has a theme and that's of feelings. So every spread is gonna represent a different feeling. And I didn't know which feeling I was gonna do when I started this, but I'm starting to get a little bit of a hint. Now my muse, she operates on a need to know basis. And most of the time she decides that I don't really need to know what's gonna happen until it happens. And that's what's going on here. I've got that clue as to what the word might be, but she's not ready to let me know just yet. So what that means is I'm just gonna keep on adding some more layers of colors. Now, should I use that bright yellow that's called sun or should I bring in some of the white? Happens to be called whitewashed. Hmm, well, I haven't done a whole lot with the white, so I think I'm gonna do that. Now, if you'd like to know the specific names of all of the paint colors that I'm using here, I'll have those all listed for you over on the blog at acolorfuljourney.com. Now, since my paint palette can't fit on camera, I've just been putting drops of the paint whenever I can directly onto the journal. That way you can see what's going on. And that got me thinking. What if I just started splattering the paint right from the bottle? This was a perfect storm of play because I have a very, very fluid paint in there. It runs beautifully. And as luck would have it, the tip on the bottle was very conducive to dripping some of this stuff out. Now I could have stopped here, but I was just having too much fun throwing that paint. So I kept right on going. Now in my studio, pretty much everywhere is a splash zone. So yep, I did get some paint in some unplanned places, meaning off the journal, but everything around here can handle a little bit of paint. So that didn't bother me a bit. And all of a sudden I knew the word that needs to go on this page. That word is exhilaration. There is something just absolutely, well, exhilarating to me about splattering paint around. Well, now I've got a problem. I know exactly what word I want to use on this page. I know which word it's meant to be, but I can't quite put the word on there yet because I've got wet paint all over the page. Those splots of paint, yeah, I'm gonna need to let them dry before I put the word on there. And it's gonna take more than a minute. Probably gonna have to let this sit overnight. Now I could use a heat gun to do it, except the force of the heat gun would blow them the spots of paint around because I was pretty generous having fun letting that paint fly. So I'm gonna take this as an opportunity for me to work on my patience and I'm gonna have to let it dry and come back to it in the morning. Well, now it is completely and totally dry and I wanna stencil the word exhilaration on here. But I know my spelling abilities are, how shall we say, suspect a lot of times. So I've written it out here on a post-it note to guide me as I'm putting the word on here. The stencil that I'm gonna be using is called Open Ended and it's one I designed for over at Stencil Girl products. So I'm gonna put the very first letter where I want it. I've eyeballed about how long I think the word's gonna be. So 
fingers crossed that the word fits all the way down here. Then I'm simply taking a pen and I'm starting to trace through the stencil. This stencil was designed to be used with both paint and with pen so that it's an easy one to trace and move along. However, you do need to actually put the pen on the area where you want it to be traced. I completely missed part of the E there, but such an easy fix to draw that line in. Now, I've checked off the letter that I've just done, and why am I checking it off? Because if I don't, I'll lose my place in where I am, and I will completely misspell the word even with it right in front of me. So what kind of pen am I using? This is a pit pen, and it's a basic black India ink pen. I like using these because they're not going to react to water once they're dry. They do need to be dry for that to happen, but once they're dry, they're not going to smear around. And of course, I could have used paint to do this, but I was in the mood to use a pen. What if you don't have a pen? Can you use something like a colored pencil or a watercolor pencil? Absolutely. The trick when using a pencil is it just needs to be sharpened to a fine point. Now this stencil is called open-ended for a reason. The letters are open on the ends. If you want to close them up, all that means is just connecting those two little dots at the end, quick little pen stroke, and letters that were open are now closed up. But some of the areas are not little like that. Some of them are larger areas. So what are the tricks for closing those up? Well, I'm going to use the stencil to do that. Any letters that have a long stretch of it that's open, I'm just going to use the edge of the stencil, like a straight edge, connecting those two dots with the pen, and that quickly closes those up. Now for the O, it's not a straight line, it's a curve. So I've got the stencil back on top, and then I'm just going to flip the stencil around. I'm going to give it a 180 there, and basically fill in the other side of the circle. So I'm just going to complete that circle, so now it looks like it was a closed O. One of the things I love about stencils is when they can be used more than one way. And this alphabet lets you have completely closed in letters or open letters. I'm going to fill in these letters with a paintbrush that is not as wide as the letters. That way I don't have to actually paint very carefully. The trick is to have just a paintbrush that's smaller than the space you're trying to paint in. I'm taking some heavy body white paint here and I am just going to loosely paint inside each one of these letters. And by loosely paint, what I mean is I'm not going to sweat if I go a little bit over a line or I don't fill something in completely. And I definitely want some of that black outlining to still be there peeking through. Well, thanks so much for stopping by and joining me for a little play in the art journal today. If you've been enjoying this video, I'd so appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, if you want to see more pages in this journal, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll know as soon as I have a new video out. Now over on my blog at acolorfuljourney.com, I've got the blog post that goes with this video and has links to everything that I used. And while you're over there, check out all the other goodies on my website, like my free workshop called Permission to Play. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.